it's really big and chunky bits, but everything is really finely uh, detailed and the fit is superb. Hello, this is BJ from Hearns Hobbies and I'm going to be looking at the new Hong Kong Models 132nd scale D0335. This particular one is the trainer version. Now this particular kit uh, had been planned for many, many years. So it was actually um, conceived at the same time that Hong Kong Model were designing their original D0335, the single seater and the, uh, the night fighters. Now it's only just been released. So they've had the tooling done for a long time and it's actually a really, really interesting aircraft. Now the D0335, known as the Arrow, uh, was developed late in the war, uh, so late Second World War. So around about uh, 1945, this particular version was made into a prototype stage. So hence, a new type um, aircraft, they always need a, a trainer type version um, because the, the whole concept of the plane was quite different. So it always helps to have another little cockpit built up. And in this case, because of the design of the aircraft, it's very slender and it actually has two engines in it. So there's one at the front uh, and one at the back. So it's a push-pull system. And what they've done is they've just added this little humpback. So where it's normally straight all the way across, it goes a little bit just up here. So it's a little bit stepped. And then you've got the main cockpit here. It's probably going to be a bit easier to see from this angle. So when you look at the, uh, the profile, you can see how the regular cockpit's there. And this would normally be all flat across. It's just been extended up a bit with the extra canopy added. It's also quite interesting here too because you can have the markings for the German, so Luftwaffe markings, or there was a captured version here when the Americans captured the prototype. It had the uh, uh, American star on it. And then in England, it had British markings. Okay, let's have a look inside and see all the bits and pieces because this is, is quite a large kit. So the DO-335 was designed to be a uh, heavy fighter uh, or light bomber, so it could carry a, um, a reasonable bomb load. It was very fast, it was actually the fastest piston um, powered aircraft that the Germans had. Right, let's look at the first bit here. Okay, so you can see the fuselage halves here, and you have the engine at the back here, and an engine at the front. So you get your, your traditional pull, and then there was also the push. And then it was narrow, you had the cockpit center in the center there. So you can see from here, you've got uh, some control services. So you've got the halves of the, uh, the horizontal stabilizers. you got your vertical stabilizer, it's already been molded in. You've got some flaps for the wings. Uh, there's various other flaps here as well. And then obviously there's going to be the rudder, which will be separate as well. So having all those separate bits allows you to play around with some of the angles and just give it that little bit of extra um, interest rather than fixed control surfaces, which can look really um, boring at times. Okay, so that's a fuselage. Very nice detail. Surface detail is really fine, as always on Hong Kong models. And they've got really nice rivets as well. Now if I hold it on this side, you'll see the design on the inside, how you've got locating pins and locating slots as well, because there's going to be spots for the engine and then also the cockpit, of course, that's going to go in the center. Okay, let's pop that over here. All right, there's a nice little piece here. So you can see the size of the wheels, and then they've got the flats as well. So basically loaded up. It gives a really good impression of weight. Um, it's something that a lot more brands should be doing, I think, because quite often you'll have to buy resin versions of this to give it that weighted look, but these are already included. Then you've got your undercarriage, main undercarriage here, main legs under the wings, really, really beefy. Um, and then other struts and it looks like bomb, bomb supports. So it's on that piece there. All right, this part here, this would be the, uh, I guess the special parts for converting this into the trainer version. So that's the humpback and the extra cockpit right there. So hence with the extra cockpit, you've got a different sort of um, a back uh, armored plate. 
you've got the cockpit itself, and then all the details for the control services. You've got an instrument panel, and then a seat. And then you've got uh, uh, probably a tank, I guess, that would go in the back. So they're the special bits that differentiate this the most from the other kits. Okay, here we're coming up with the engines. So engines, as you can see, super detailed. Okay, so you've got, um, well, they should be identical, I think. Because they did use the same engines, front and back. So you've got the supercharger just down here. There are two halves of the, uh, the engine block. You've got your exhaust. So really nice. As you can see, fully interior detailed engines. So you could have one covered up if you like, but it'll be a bit of a shame, I think. So two of the same detail. And then over here, this particular one's got some extra bits. It's got the, uh, uh, the front gearbox for the spinner. Uh, engine mount, some more exhaust. So these are just the differences between the push-pull system from the front and the rear engine. Okay, so I've got those. Right here, we've got the um, uh, some tanks there, probably kind of fuel tank. You've got the cowling for the engine, so that would be most likely for the front, I'd say. And then at the back, you've got the, the undercarriage covers, both there. Okay, this piece has got uh, it's probably leading edges, I'm thinking, of the wing. Quite like the way they've done that because this, because they've been molded in this section in one piece, there's no join line on the center here, so it's fully smooth. And then it's been designed with some reinforcing parts. It means that it maintains all the really sharp detail on the edge. You've got the uh, nose wheel here, also weighted. You can see how flat it is, and that gives you an indication of exactly how heavy this particular aircraft was. You've got the instrument panels, and then uh, front gear. And some covers here as well. And that looks like a bomb, just see. So you've got the tail fins of the bomb and the front section. Okay, moving along, we've got long bit here. All right, so you've got some more leading edge, probably for the guns. You've got uh, some more cowling. So you've got a front and back cowl. Here you've got some uh, air intakes, and then control surfaces, and then the front engine cowl. So you have the exhaust poking out the sides here. So these will be panels that you'll be able to leave off, so you can see the engine detail. So a closer look on this side, so you can see these are all the main mounting points. There's a seat here for the main cabin. Okay. All right, we've got a huge piece here, so these are the wings. So you've got to remember, this is a 35th scale, oh, sorry, 32nd scale fighter. And you imagine the size of these wings, these are massive. It was a big plane, and a fast plane at that. Okay, so you can see the, the cut opens here for the main undercarriage, for the wings. Uh, it's fairly open because, as you can see before, uh, there were the, the large uh, sub-assemblies for uh, the leading edges, and then you've also got the control surfaces as well. Now, if I spin around here, you see the undercarriage wells. You've got nice ribbing and such. Very beefy block structure here, so when it all goes together, you've got a locating lugs as well. It's going to be very solid when it goes together. And these, I think, are going to be the uh, side cowlings for the rear engine. That's probably all the exhaust holes here. Like that. Okay. All right, so we've got some clear bits now. Okay, so there's two clear bits. So you've got one bit for the um, the main canopy, and then there's going to be a section for the uh, uh, the rear, the trainer part. So I'm guessing this is the trainer bit, and that's the regular canopy. So interesting. I may have it the wrong way around, but you can see from there. Then you've got a, a little panel here. Maybe a lower panel. The Hong Kong um, model's glass is really impressive because the fit is immaculate and it's super clear. Okay, so these appear to be, um, 
I think these would be the rudders. Have a closer look. These are wingtips. Wingtips? These are optional wingtips, I'd say. So it looks like a wider option or a narrow option. I guess you can have the clip wing or a full wing. But we'll check in the manual later and just confirm that. And then we'll get our final piece of huge sprue. So you've got internal bulkheads, you've got the flooring, you've got the cockpit, uh, you've got bulkheads here. You've got the two massive props, the so push-pull arrangement. Uh, this appears to be the support for a seat. And then you've got various oxygen bottles. So there's a lot of interior detail. And then you've got a spinner, air intake. Probably some tank of some type. And then some, um, uh, I'll say that's an air intake of type. So really nice. You've got all this little hosing and such. You got this big, huge prop shaft. Okay, so that that's it for all the uh, main plastic parts. Now, interesting part, got this. So this is heavy weights, which will be put on the front of the aircraft because with these particular um, tricycle type planes, when you build it, it's very um, heavy in the back end. So you need the weight in the front just to keep it standing on its um, three wheels. Otherwise, it'll be just tail heavy and just resting on its tail. So that's very nice. And it's all shaped. So it just drops in perfectly. So you don't have to worry about adding extra weight just to make sure it doesn't sit on its, on its butt. So you got that. Okay, so here we've got the uh, selection of uh, decals. So you've got the uh, Luftwaffe type. Let's put it this way, actually. That'll be better. These are all printed by Cartograph, like all of their decals. So it'll be really, really nice, super crisp. Uh, as I said earlier, the Luftwaffe, you've got the American, and then there's British type as well. You've got the instrument panel there, and then all the stenciling as, as well, and then there's a little bit of photo wedge. So the photo wedge is probably um, uh, seat belts, and a couple of little grills. So there's a grill there as well. And then there's also the split swastika. So if you want the sw swastikas, you can have them on, but you just have to join them up. And that's uh, that's the way they're being done in a lot of brands now. Okay, so decals and bits. All right, and then you've got the, your big manual. So this is a pretty traditional size manual for Hong Kong models now. See how thick it is there. It's good having a big manual because it's, it's very easy to, to follow. So let's just quickly go through it. All right, so you start with the cockpit. So you've got the photo wedge going on the seats. Goes into building of the tub for the cockpit. The floor, the tanks going in, and then you can see all these various sub-assemblies going together. It's quite clever how it interlocks. So this will be the reinforcing for the wings. Okay, at this point where you're building the engines, and then the engines being mounted in the rear with the, uh, uh, that's the instrument panel going in. And then there's also the engine in the front. So you can easily see the, the, the front and rear engine in this diagram. That's getting zipped up with the sides now. So one side's gone in. And then there's that, uh, that intake uh, tunnel we saw before. And then it gets both halves zipped up. There's a big uh, prop shaft that's going out the back from the engine to the rear propeller. Here's a section where the... Um, uh, uh, the trainer cockpit goes. I was lost for words for a second there. And then you can see here how it's all stepped. You've got the two cockpits. Would have been noisy with this engine right, right behind your head there. There's that engine mount with the front engine. Going through, you've got the, uh, some uh, control surfaces going on. So they're the horizontal stabilizers. You get into covering up some of the ducts and the rudder. Rear prop going on with the spinner. Uh, canopy glass going in, you've got the uh, uh, the cowling for the engine on the front. So you can see here it's in the open position. So you've got options there. Open, closed. There's a closed position. 
Uh, and the carriage going in. So you get your, your front one there. You got the uh, Bombay doors. They're going in. Okay, so you get your front end cowling. And then you start on the wings. So you can see that multifaceted uh, construction here. So you had that, that's a box section for the undercarriage. You got all the other details going in. Top goes on. Covers open or closed. And then you've got your control surfaces at the back. The, uh, the wing tips we saw before. And then that's that front section for the leading edge. And the carriage goes in. And then that's the other side of the wing. That's all the same. The wings are put together. So you see that reinforcing part here. Really important for such a big aircraft because there's a lot of load that's going to be on the wing route. So that's it fully um, uh, geared down. And that's the option with all the gear up. So a bit more streamlined, everything's all closed up. And then again, the two options there. Gear down fully opened, flight mode. And then you go through all the various sprues, like where all the parts are. You're all numbered so it's easy to work out where it is. That's the, um, the decal artwork. And then we'll be going into the painting guide and the decal guide. So a few different options there. So here it gives you a list of um, different types of paint, different brands. So you've got AK, you've got Mr. Hobby and Tamiya codes. Okay, so you've got the captured versions here. Interesting here how it's just been sprayed out and then the different markings are just put on top. And then at the back you've got a full listing of all the different color descriptions. And then the codes again. So you've got Mr. Hobby, you've got Tamir and AK. So that's my um, completed open box review of the new Hong Kong models 132nd scale DO335 uh, Arrow uh, trainer version. So that's a bit of a mouthful isn't it? But I've got it all out. And as you can see, there's really nice detail. It's, it's really big and chunky bits, but everything is really finely uh, detailed and the fit is superb. So if you, if you like your weird uh, and interesting aircraft, there's definitely one to pick and it's actually a real aircraft. So these have been flying around and this particular version was prototyped. So hope you enjoyed that and give it some thought because it's a really beautiful kit.